since the mid-1990s when it became known that giving intravenous clotbuster was helpful to patients who had presented within three hours of their stroke, the reality in terms of the number of patients that were able to benefit from that therapy was unfortunately very few patients and that has to do with the fact that it was hard to get people into the system, into hospitals, into emergency rooms and then properly triaged uh, within the three hour mark. The intravenous medication didn't always work and obviously there were some systemic complications that are associated with that medication. Uh, there are certain risks in terms of hemorrhages that can happen uh, because the, the intravenous medication works systemically and it's a powerful medication. So for example, uh, someone who had had recent surgery, recent major surgery within the last two weeks of having their stroke, it was contraindicated to give the uh, intravenous medication because they would bleed into the area of the surgery. So such patients, for example, became very good candidates for the more recent technology, which is the mechanical embolectomy, where people such as myself with training in neurointerventional techniques can use a catheter placed in the femoral artery in the groin and navigated into the brain to basically extract the clot. The clot extraction technique is viable and uh, patients are still candidates up to eight hours after the onset of their symptoms. So we're able to recoup a much larger number of people and afford a larger number of stroke victims help in that regard. The procedure takes uh, on average anywhere from one to three hours and depending on each individual patient's anatomy and how difficult the case is. Like with any procedure there's been a lot of different names attached to it. Uh, mechanical embolectomy is one name, clot retrieval is another name, intracranial clot retrieval or you know catheter based clot extraction for acute stroke. If someone uh, is found to have a stroke within the three hour mark, they are still recommended for the intravenous clot buster if they can get it, meaning if they're, if they're a candidate. Uh, and uh, if they're beyond the three hour or if for some reason uh, they're not a good candidate for the intravenous therapy, then we are interested to take appropriate candidates to the angio suite or the cath lab to go ahead and try to extract the clot. It's, it's an exciting option for patients who are having very severe strokes. It's, it's a very active area of ongoing research to help define exactly which patients are good candidates. Percentage of success is similar to what's been reported in the literature, about 50 to 80 percent chance that I can reopen the occluded blood vessel, the blocked vessel. Uh, however, not every successful reopening will result in a successful outcome. Uh, unfortunately, these patients are very sick. They're often elderly with other comorbid conditions, uh, and they're in the middle of having a severe stroke. Uh, as a result, only about a third of patients that we actually will do the procedure and will have good outcomes. So there's a lot more room to learn uh, you know, about this procedure, and that makes it an exciting field as well.